So first of all, I need you all to check the material. Huh? So we have three materials. So this is the exercise part, chapter one to four, and then section C uh, experiment. And then you should have uh, short notes. Okay, short notes that looks like that. The colored one. And then uh, one more should be one. Uh, should be objective. So objective, right? It's more like um, it's for your own practice. Huh? You have to you have to do a lot of questions in order to be confident in your objective questions. And so you try to, as in like your coming up exam, your first term exam, or you call it as a midterm exam, you try to score as high as you can for objective. By do how are you able to score high in objective? The only way is to spend a lot of exercise. Okay, when you when you are familiar with how question will ask and like what kind of answers you have, you have different direction of view and then uh, you can score better. Uh, so actually for you, like, a lot, like one chapter, I think I have 40 to 50 questions for one chapter because then you can kind of get through every kind of questions. Okay, so um, the main point of today is actually for subjective, the writing part. So I tried... According to Mandarin class, the Chinese classes now, I managed to cover one, two, three, uh, not four, uh, because we have limited time also. But also do section C with you later, like the uh, experiment format. That's like a format to follow. Okay. But yeah, so that's basically what is going to happen today. So one, two, three, we settle the first three chapter. Then four for you. Uh, no, not, not four for you, but you know, number four is for you. Okay. So. Uh, you want to have your short notes side by side, this one, and then your exercise on the right, so we can, you know, check answers back and forth. So you want to turn to, I have really picked questions to do with you, lah, so I'll choose uh, uh, every like subtopic, I have one question for you. So we want to go to page number four, uh, question number two onwards. Uh. Okay, so I'm not going to finish all of them because quite a lot, quite a lot of extra questions, uh, so you all can finish out at home, make sure you all practice. Uh, spend more time on doing work, writing and exercising rather than rather than reading and memorizing. Because that one, the efficiency very low. One. Memorizing and reading efficiency is very low. Like the, the result is actually not so good compared to writing and practicing work. You remember better that way. Okay, so uh, as we talk about the questions, I'll go into the subtopic. Lah. So then we get to... Uh, we get to discuss a little bit. Okay, so like number two, it's about safety, uh, wearing your personal equipment, things like that. Okay, so uh, state one type of accident that might occur in a laboratory. So then you go to your short notes, you can try to find out like the subtopic we talk about accidents. So accidents, what, here, there you go. Okay, steps to handle accidents. So we have common accidents in science lab. And then I think question is asking for one accident, one type of accident that will occur, and justify your answer with suitable example, meaning give one accident and then give one sort of reason. Like for example, if you want to write like splinter, glass splinter, okay, then you have to explain why. So usually glass splinter is when you break your uh, test you or you break your thermometer you know so you want to add on behind so after you write hand cut by glass splinter comma then you can mention the reason is uh, maybe uh, uh, accidentally break test tubes or you can write due to broken uh, thermometer uh, like that yeah uh, so that's how you want to answer for too much so you know be straightforward lah. don't have to write too long or to have to have a lot of extra stuff. So be straightforward, like fire accident, full stop, due to chemical exposure or due to gas leak, or a hand cut by splinter, full stop, due to broken glass. See, straight and simple. You choose one, you choose either one. I have three answers for you. You don't mind, you can write all three, but you can choose. I don't have to write all of them.
Okay, good. Okay, so that one below shows a student was conducting experiment in the laboratory. What is the personal protective equipment worn by the student? So protective equipment means the things that you wear. La. So it's here, la, actually. So obvious. The picture already the answer. From the picture, you can tell that he's wearing this and wearing that. So you choose. Uh, okay, so I think for three marks, uh, means you must have three uh, equipments on the body. Okay, so like up to you, uh, you can pick. I mean, from the picture, I'm pretty sure he's wearing lab coat. He's wearing uh, face mask. No, not really. He's not wearing face mask. He's wearing goggles, uh, maybe gloves. Okay, the top part. Good, uh, Dana. I push up like that. Okay. Why does the student need to wear all the personal protective equipment you've stated above? Okay. Right, so uh, the, because the question is not being specific, unless question asks what is the function of goggle, then you can say protect the eye. La, so, so, yeah. But the thing is, I think we can just generally say that uh, we pro protect ourselves from injury la, because not specific. Ma. Uh, so question didn't ask specifically. Ma. So we say generally la, to avoid injury. La. Okay. Okay, uh, so next one. Uh, Hyris is exposed to acid spill on the skin of his arm during the experiment, suggests so one equipment to use. Acid spill, one equipment to use. So weird. Like, do we ever do we have that particular uh okay? We actually learned something called safety shower, right? Safety shower is if you gonna acid or you gonna chemical, you go to the shower, you whoosh, you flush yourself with water. Right, so I think question is also asking for this. Uh. Question is asking for one equipment to be used. Then only we explain the next one. Yeah, okay. So like the equipment is safety shower. Okay. Uh, and what is the importance of the equipment? I think we write the the, the description, the explanation of safety shower. Uh, why important? Oh, very important because uh, can immediately rinse and wash away. You know, the the substances. But I don't think, uh, did they say which body part? No, it's just random. Okay. So, yeah, I think I copy exactly from, from the short notes. Huh? Mm. Can say, for example, sorry, Havish, uh, which one are you referring to? Two A. Uh. Oh, you mean like fire accident, for example? Chemical explosion and gas leak. Is that what you meant? Oh, uh, can can no problem. Those, uh, you know, grammar stuff is okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me continue. Ah, uh, C two. Okay, all good. Right, number three. The heated solution has splattered 
uh, into the student's eye? What immediate action should be taken? So, kena eye, then you be there. Oh, I remember there's this thing called eye wash station. Actually, doesn't matter because question asks what, what to do, not about the equipments. So it's okay to even you just wash with basin uh, water. So the important question answer here is not about the equipment. Remember, unlike like just now, uh, when question asks about equipment, then okay, fine, we talk about equipment. But now it's asking what should you do? So uh, you can say either you want to go to eye wash or you want to go to the basin just to get water running into the eye. Yeah, uh, so make sure you understand what question wants. So, Two, two marks. Number one is to wash your eye. Number two is uh, also a very standard answer, which is to inform the teacher. Okay. So immediately rinse and wash the eye. And then number two, report to teacher immediately. Okay, all good. Then we shall try on the next one. Um, we can go for question number four. La, huh? Question number four. Uh, like five more seconds, we will move. Okay, good. Uh, number four, like question number four, page number five, huh? like page five. Okay, what's this about? This is about a type of substance that can be disposed into sink or cannot dispose into sink. Uh, I think uh, they are quite straightforward, right? Uh, I think the easier way for you to memorize is this. Anything that is between five to nine, the, the, the pH value 5 to 9 means not too acidic, not too alkaline, will be good to dispose okay, uh, into the sink. But anything that's lower than 5 and more than 9 means very acidic and very alkaline, then not suitable to be disposed into the sink because it's hazardous to leaving things up. Okay, so like now, very simple. I just want you to separate them into what can throw into the sink and what cannot, which you can also refer to your shop notes. Huh? Uh, okay, like uh, just a short while for you to differentiate. You uh, try to uh, categorize into two groups, huh? then we move on later to B. What does it mean by heavy metal? Heavy metal means uh, like mercury, uh, mercury, uh, lead, usually means the, the too dangerous material. It's called heavy metal. Uh, mercury, you remember that as heavy metal, which is toxic and dangerous to living things. Okay, uh, can, uh. okay, so anything that can dispose to sink should be between five to nine, weak, little bit acid, little bit alkaline, and of course neutral. So I guess quite limited items. So like neutral substances, weak acid, weak alkaline. Weak acid means a bit 
a bit acidic, which is slightly below seven, like maybe maybe six, maybe five. Okay, weak alkaline is above seven a little bit, like maybe maybe seven point five, maybe eight, and maybe nine. Okay, neutral means seven. Huh? Then I think everything else you throw into the the other side. Those are all the dangerous things. Okay, good, no problem. And then we go to the next page, huh? number six in five seconds. Okay, good. Okay, like what are biological ways of success? Hmm. Speaking about biological ways, it's here. Biological ways. Biological ways substances mean substances that are from living things that is hazardous to the environment. So we need to follow uh, steps to categorize them and how to uh, how to manage the waste. Lah, basically, you cannot just simply throw, throw into rubbish bin. We have steps to, to do it. Since we're here, right, let me quickly explain a bit. Uh, category A. You memorize all category A are sharp equipment because the alphabet A itself is is sharp on the tip, right? Sharp, sharp, right? That's how I remember. Try my best to remember with the, the name. A, sharp, sharp. So sharp items. B is rounded. See, see how B is like boing, boing, rounded. So non-sharp, non-sharp. C for carcasses. D for liquid. Okay, okay like this one a bit. Try too hard, but I mean better than nothing. Lah. Liquid. Yeah. C for carcasses. Carcasses, carcasses means dead bodies. Lah. Like animals, uh, black animals, uh, rats, frogs. Okay, that's how you want to remember each category. A for sharp. So what do we do about sharp? We have to put in special bin, special rubbish bin, rubbish, special waste bin, the yellow color, pale if you have seen before. And then the, the top cover has one circle for you to throw the syringe into it. No need autoclave. That means no need for sterilization, no need kill germs, all right? and then keep it in a safe place until uh, people come and collect. B, non-sharp one, eh, we have to put in special plastic bag, which is called biohazard plastic bag, uh, and then have to autoclave, have to kill germs. Okay. C, uh, we will put in, let wrap by a tissue paper to absorb the blood, you know, the fluid, whatever that comes out from the body of the animal. Then have to uh, put into a plastic bag and then frozen. I mean, if you don't freeze it, it will rot, right? It will spoil, right? So we want to freeze it, okay? And D will be liquid, like blood, maybe. You have to autoclave, means to kill germs, kill uh, to sterilize, and then can throw into sink or toilet bowl straight away. Yeah. Okay, look. So, so roughly, that's how we want to categorize them, A, B, C, and D. This one is a bit definitional, so this one can copy straight away. Yeah, and then the next one also, SOP of biological waste, which is a standard operating procedure for managing the waste, uh, which is the steps to manage, to categorize it to A, B, C, D, and then what do you do about it? That's called SOP. These two definitions are definition, like, you know, from your textbook, you have to memorize the definition. But not a lot, lah. I mean, don't, don't have to stress about it. Anyway, it's just going to be one mark or two marks. That's it. For the whole entire paper. But sometimes it's a bit not worth it if you memorize so many. Right? So. Okay, uh, 
Then uh, you, you can also continue with D on your own to write down the type of ways like sharp objects or non-sharp. You decide based on the ABC already or the examples already there. You can copy from your short notes also, okay? Okay, good. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh. So no problem. Um, I wait you at, we go to another part. Uh, let me see after this. Mm, steps to handle. Steps to handle. Okay, we'll get to fire extinguisher. But before that, I will talk about this part a little bit. A little, little, little bit. Yeah, okay, you're good. So uh, um, the, the two situation that your textbook give you in terms of uh, steps to handle accident will be general chemical, right? Chemical spill and mercury spill. So the steps are very similar. This one, I think you better memorize the steps a bit. Okay, now uh, at almost the same. Number one, inform teacher. Number two, ask your friends to go away. Don't come near the spillage. So the difference is this. Normal chemical, we will cover or we will put a boundary of sand to prevent the chemical from, uh, you know, spilling further. But uh, for mercury, we add sulfur powder. So that, that's the only difference here. So sand is to be a boundary. Sulfur powder is to react with the mercury so it becomes more stable because mercury itself is a bit dangerous. It evaporates into the air also. If you inhale or it goes into your body, you can get mercury poisoning. Uh. So we want to add sulfur to react and let it be more stable, okay? To calm down, right? And then uh, then the rest will be quite similar. Lah. This one is to scope it and dispose safely. And this one is to call the fire department instead, okay? So the steps you'll try to remember a bit. Lah. Uh, okay, not very difficult. Lah. Okay, then the next will be fire extinguisher. So fire extinguisher, uh, I think the easier way to remember this are to remember the class of fire, the types of fire. Because anyhow, when you want to extinguish something, you have to know what is that that is burning. Because different substance uh, catches fire requires different method to extinguish them. So you can either memorize this table or I actually like to memorize this then I will think about which is suitable, which is suitable, or it's here, lah, basically. Uh, okay, but how, how to remember? Number one, you do this. A, B, C, solid, liquid, gas in sequence, right? A, B, C, solid, liquid, gas. That's how, one you, that's how you want to memorize in sequence. Then D for metal, E for electronics, F for fats. Basically, metal has, I have no words for you to like memorize a bit, but E for electronics, F for fats, this one, okay, huh? Then A, B, C, solid, liquid, gas. I like that. So when you close your eyes, remember A, B, C, solid, liquid, gas. Then D is metals. And then E for electronic, F for fats, which is oil, basically. Uh, okay, so the general extinguisher that is good for everything uh, is this tree. Water and foam, quite useless one. Uh, because water and foam, I see water can only uh, go for class A, which is solid stuff. All the, the rest cannot, you know, B, C, D, E, F, water extinguisher, no use. Uh. 
Ah, then four ma can only go for A and B. Ah, C, D, E, F also cannot. Ah, yeah. So, uh, therefore, I think uh, it will be easier to understand the types of fire than we decide. So, carbon dioxide, dry powder, and A, B, C is the best for all the classes. Basically, you write dry powder, then you are right lah for for every kind of uh, of fire. Okay. Okay. Then how to extinguish, how to use extinguisher. So this one also important steps. Make sure you remember it. So P-A-S-S, -S, the short form of pass. Pull the safety pin. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle. Sweep left and right, side to side. So you can extinguish the fire. Okay, so try to remember the steps here. Yeah. Okay, like we get into it and we'll come back if we need to. So... Okay, like I, I have a lot of extra questions. I uh, make sure you try at home long. Huh? You must do it uh, in order to, to go through all the subtopics. So I think I do number 10, uh, question 10, page 10. Question 10, page 10, 10, 10. And you know what? The picture is the ballet. Uh, if you realize. <laughs> Okay, I have valid. So, 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 the, the, this is fire, by the way. If it's not, it's it looks like something melting also. Weird, huh? Then the switch is here at the corner. So, I'm pretty sure this is the valid. Okay. Okay, so, well, um, sometimes we do this, right? We try to plug a lot of things in one if there's no choice. Uh, this is dangerous because this can cause overloading. Overloading means too much electricity coming in and too hot can catch up, uh, the, the, the plugs will catch on fire because they melt and they can start burning. Anyway, what is the cost of fire? So this is electronics, uh, electrical appliances. That's the source of the fire. Okay, source of the, the, uh, the fire. Okay, what type of fire is most suitable? What type of fire extinguisher is most suitable? Um, remember, electrical appliances, right? Electricity, definitely not liquid stuff, not water fire extinguisher, not foam extinguisher. Because, you know, electricity, you cannot use liquid. Uh, water cannot. So it will be the rest. Of, either you go for carbon dioxide or either you go for the dry powder, the universal one. Okay, uh, so like, there you go. So I go for carbon dioxide. Okay, what type of extinguisher should not be used? Uh, that's how we mentioned it, the two liquid one, either water or foam should not. Nah. Why? Obviously, they are liquid. Liquid can give you electric shock or you want to say in a more scientific way, which is uh, this water or foam, right? They are good electric conductor. I think that's the correct word to say, right? Good electric conductor. So dangerous, so cannot use. Okay, good. Like two things that should be emphasized during the auditing of fire extinguisher. Okay, yeah, this part is here, auditing. 
So fire extinguisher needs to be maintained one, you know, cannot, cannot say like, oh, I buy already, I just put it there for 10 years. Now, every year you have to do the auditing, means you have to check if the expiry is okay, the types of extinguisher, is it correct? How many extinguishers you should have and the location of the extinguisher, right? Ah, so these are the four things, but I think question one's two. Ah, like any two, like your copy from here. Uh, where is it? Uh, here, like expired date law and the shorter answer type of extinguisher. Okay, then yeah, any two are uh, you're good. Okay, next one. The fire extinguisher that function well are very important. How do you ensure the fire extinguisher around you work well all the time? This is a turbulent question. Okay, this is a turbulent question. Meaning we know that we have to do auditing to check this and check that. Then now question asks you, how how, how are you supposed to know all your extinguisher? Okay, the balero, I must do auditing. Uh. I must check uh, I must maintain the extinguisher. Uh. Number one. Number two, if uh ex if expired or anything wrong, we change new one. Okay. Although this kind of question sounds like uh you know those answers where you have to answer logical answer or you know out of syllabus kind of thing. Actually, no one. Um whenever question sounds like that, right? It's trying to trick you or lure you to write something else. Always tell yourself your answer has to be from syllabus. One cannot be like out of it or funny, funny answers. Yeah. So basically, I need to do auditing. I need to maintain the extinguisher often, or maybe you can say that once a year. And then second thing is, if as, and there's any expired extinguisher, um, let's change up. Uh, as long as you get to uh, present the idea or the main point and can, because you know, your way of writing English, my way of writing English were different. So no point, you know, to always follow my way. Make sure you have your direction and then you'll be able to form your own sentence. Ah. Okay, uh, so simple, simple answer like that. This is how I write, but you can use your own way if you want to. Make sure you talk about like you want to maintain extinguisher uh, uh, regularly or every once a year or every once, uh, every twice in a year. Then number point number two, expired must change. Ah. Okay, then we can move on to the next one. Okay, yeah, good. Uh, like five more seconds. Okay, let's go. Um, yeah, I guess pretty much like that. Yeah. And uh, we can move on to chapter two. So there's this DIY fire extinguisher lah, that you want to uh, 
kind of know, right? We're using vinegar, water, and soda bicarbonate. When all this thing mixed together, right, it produces CO2. So CO2 is a good extinguisher, right? CO2 is a good extinguisher. Combustion requires oxygen. So CO2 is to kill the oxygen, so no combustion. And you spray, spray on fire, okay? Uh, just to let you know. Sometimes they must like, ask you to create, ask you to draw a simple fire extinguisher. Uh, this one is the one that we're talking about, okay? Yeah. Uh, okay, no, voila, chapter one is about that. So you know what? Um, what we just did was to shorten your study time. What you want to do at home is you want to go straight to your exercise, right? And you try to find answer from short notes. So you do two things at one time. You study and you do exercise at the same time. Because a lot of time, you open up your book, you force yourself to memorize a little bit, maybe let's say one hour, two hours, or three hours. Then, Baru, you want to start your exercise. After you finish memorizing, you want to start your exercise, your energy is already very low, right? You don't feel like doing exercise anymore. So oftentimes, you just read and make yourself feel better. That's it. Just to, you know, just to get over the guilt that you didn't study for exam. Just want to read through and ah, I'm ready tomorrow exam. That's just a waste of time, trust me. So, especially nowadays, uh, our focus span is very short. If you can sit down and memorize or study for three hours, that, that's already very good, right? But the thing is this, don't waste time, too much time on reading. So what you want to do at home, which is to open up questions, like what we just did, you read one question, try to find one answer. Read question, try to find answer. Try to find answers from my short notes. Nine, I would say 80% of answers you can find from my short notes. Right? So save up, save up your time. Don't spend too much time on reading. Spend more time on working, writing things, uh, and try to uh, practice some exercise. Okay? So you try to do what we just did for chapter one just now at home. You don't always have to sit down and study first. You can actually do exercise, then study later. I, I think that is more efficient, right? Uh, so you keep doing the same thing. So other questions are for you. Uh, uh, then we go chapter two. Okay, chapter two, very short and simple. Uh, it's just one page. <laughs> one page, not even one paper. It's half of the paper. One paper got two pages. This is one page. So I think this is a very familiar chapter also, which is your CPR and... Uh, Himlik maneuver. Lah. Okay, so who needs CPR? CPR is for those uh, not breathing, not responding, and no heartbeat. Usually, a uh, heart attack patient, electric shock, or drowning patient. Okay, so the procedure, le, um, try to remember, I think, the main part of each. La. I'm not asking you to memorize the whole sequence. I try to memorize a bit on each like for example number one is the famous are you okay number two you need to check the airway i need to open up airway and listen if there's any breathing and observe the chest of the patient okay number three chest compression right you go through the details on how to do it so i'm not going to do it here um, then you do mouth to mouth to supply oxygen so uh, chest compression 30 times followed by mouth to mouth two times. The, 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 the steps are like that. Then you repeat until ambulance arrival. Okay. If the victim start breathing, but still unconscious, feeling weak, then um, position the victim on his side. That means lie on the side. Don't lie flat on the back. Because that is a bit difficult for the patient to breathe. Okay. So you want to go through all the details a little bit. I really cut short for you. Lah. Uh, now, science concept behind CPR. So there's two things we do. Uh, we do chest compression and mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, right? Chest compression and mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. So uh, chest compression is basically to restore the blood circulation. Restore blood because the heart is not pumping anymore. So if the heart is not pumping anymore, the blood doesn't flow. The blood has to be going around to supply oxygen. Right? If the blood doesn't flow, then you won't get enough of oxygen. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, number one, that's to provide uh, blood circulation. Lah. Yeah. Number two, mouth to mouth is to obviously give oxygen. Okay. Supply oxygen to uh, the, the lungs. Lah. So then uh, you get enough oxygen for your brain, especially if your brain does not receive oxygen like within 10 minutes, 
you can have brain dead. Lah. That means your brain is not functioning anymore. Even if you recover from it, you probably be a paralyzed person. Okay. Uh, so there you go. That's the science concept behind. Uh, we can get into this question and we'll be back for Himlik maneuver. Okay. Uh, CPR. Okay. 16. Nah. Page 16, question number four. Question number four, everybody. Okay, all good. Okay, like uh, obviously this is drowning. Drowning must be CPR, but you must write the full name. Lah, huh? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Uh, the full name. Okay. Okay, all good. Right, next one. Two important techniques in emergency help. Uh, the, the two steps that are important, which is called the what? Uh, the chest, ch ch chest compression and then uh, mouth to mouth. Uh, so like your spelling is here anyway. Chest compression, mouth to mouth. Not this sentence uh, straight away. Chest compression and mouth to mouth. Okay. Okay. After receiving the emergency help, the victim shows sign of consciousness. Oh, like maybe start breathing, not fully wakened, but consciousness. Okay. What's the next step? I remember if the person start breathing and have conscious, we don't do the chest compression anymore. Huh? If your heart is pumping, you are breathing, should stop the chest compression. So then we have to place the victim, victim on the side. Huh? So can breathe, lah. okay? Uh, so like from place the victim's body on his side. Uh, do the victim needs to be sent to hospital, right? Of course, right? Uh, takan the person stand up and feel okay and walk away, right? So of course we need to send. But why do we need to send? Uh, we don't get to find this in your textbook. But logically, we need to go to hospital to what to check lah, right? To check lah. Probably that's what in your it, it, that's what in your mind now. Like you have to check to see if the person is okay or not. So point number one, we will say uh yes, you still need to go to hospital. Number two, for what um um to check if there's any further complications, or you can write to check if there's any serious injury. That doesn't matter. However, you want to write huh? Uh, so I say to detect any complication caused by drownage. Okay, good.
Okay, next one, next page. Huh? Okay, so what will happen if the victim failed to receive oxygen supply immediately? Um, I think it's here. If you don't get enough of oxygen on time, you will, so probably the, the more straightforward answer is you're thinking, oh, the person will die, right? But be more scientific or like write what we have in our syllabus, right? If oxygen does not receive on time, brain damage could happen. That's the most important thing. Lah. Okay. So uh, one mark only, right? Brain damage huh? or two marks. Ah? Uh, okay. So I think we can write... Mm. Okay, we can write brain damage. Then reason is you don't get enough of oxygen. Okay, so like brain damage or can write death because oxygen is needed. Or you can do the other way around because oxygen is not, uh, is, uh, is not given uh, to the brain on time or it's not received by the brain on time. Okay, right. What will happen to the victim if emergency situation A is not done correctly? Um, so, so if we don't know and you have not been certified to do it, then better not do it. What can go wrong? The question is asking what can go wrong. So the most common thing that can go wrong is you break the ribs. Because if you don't know the, the depth that you should do the compression, you might crack, you might crack the ribs. So that's the most uh, common problem. The second thing is mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. You're supposed to blow air into the person's lung, but if you don't know how to blow correctly, the person actually do not get oxygen, which is the two procedure. Chest-to-chest uh, -chest can go wrong if you crack the ribs. Uh, number two, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation can go wrong if you don't know the correct technique. You don't get the patient don't get enough of oxygen. Okay, so like uh, actually, actually it's just one mark. So either one will do. Let's say the short one, the victim's ribs can be broken, or the other one, the exhaled air that goes into the mouth does not reach the lungs. Up. Okay, good. Then we can do a hemolytic maneuver. Okay, yeah, good. Uh. Okay, number 19, uh, page 19, question 7. Okay, but we will talk about it. Okay. Right, so uh, choking, hmm. what's choking? Choking is technically, choking is when your respiratory tract is blocked because of food or because of foreign objects that you swallow. So it's respiratory tract, it's not your esophagus where you swallow your food, right? There's two tubes in your neck, your respiratory tract and esophagus. So respiratory tract is blocked. So uh, oxygen couldn't get into your lungs, huh? so you won't get enough of oxygen. You can get brain damage. So, uh, hemolytic maneuver and the uh, CPR both are basically to make sure that your brain get enough of oxygen. Okay, so symptoms are like holding the neck with both hands. You know, like choking sign. That's how they hold their neck. Cannot cough and cannot speak. Cannot even cough. The normal choking that we get, right? It is basically just very minor. You cough, cough, cough. That's it. 
but uh, real choking or serious choking is really, really bad. Like you cannot even cough, cannot even speak at all. Lips, skin, nails, everything goes uh, to pur purple color and then difficulty in breathing. Okay, so never stand behind the victim always, sorry, never stand in front of the victim, always go behind because you want to bend the body forward. Okay, hold a fist, right? Go around and uh, place your fist between the navel and below the ribs, between your belly button and below your ribs. So you want to push it in, jerk upwards with a quick force. So the main thing is to jerk the lungs, actually not to jerk the stomach. If you jerk the stomach, you make the person vomit. It's two different tubes, just to make sure you understand. Uh, trachea, breathing channel is one. Esophagus is the other one. So if you compress the stomach, you might make the person vomit. It's the wrong tube. You want to jerk the lungs so that the air pressure will push the object from the trachea or from the air channel. Yeah, so the lungs is giving pressure so that it will reject uh, or eject the substance out. Okay, there you go. Very simple steps, but uh, you need to go through the details a bit. Okay, so if you're alone, if you're choking and alone, well, do the same thing, but it's just that you need to find something to exert pressure. Maybe go to a chair, maybe go to a cabinet, push yourself against the cabinet. Uh, so it's actually part of your syllabus. Your syllabus actually talks about it if you're, if you're alone. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, like him leg maneuver, 19, page 19. Okay, yeah. Okay, like question seven. Number one, very simple. What the man is joking, obviously, right? He's not killing himself. He is choke. Uh, okay, how could the situation in A happen? Why someone choke? Uh? So weird. It's actually from syllabus. Choking is because... Uh, it's, it's not logical thinking answer, okay? It's definitely from your syllabus. Choking is when your respiratory tract is blocked because of object. Wait, two marks, uh? I think so. So yeah, two marks, then you have to explain the other one. Respiratory tract is blocked because of food. Is 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 uh is blocked due to food or foreign object. Means you can get less oxygen, uh. Respiratory tract is blocked and prevent oxygen from reaching the lungs. So I think two marks are, that's why you need these two. Huh? One is here, one is here. Okay, so I think I copy quite the same also. Yeah, there you go. Mm. So go ahead. Okay, good. All right, C, like what emergency aid um, that you can give to the victim? Okay, then now asking for the name. Make sure you spell correctly. It's called him lick maneuver. Uh, check out spelling. Uh, it's here anyways. Him lick maneuver.
Okay, good, good. Right, next one. Um, a pregnant woman was found lying on the floor of a restaurant because she choked. In your opinion, what sort of emergency must be? Okay, so you might be thinking, well, wow, pregnant woman cannot let, uh, what, what should we do? Actually, it doesn't matter. Pregnant woman or normal or whoever you are, him leg maneuver is extremely important. Choking, eh? Choking, eh? If you don't do anything about it, right? The person will die. The baby also will die. So... You still continue him leg maneuver, but thing is, uh, the placement of the fist is slightly upper. So because there's a baby, you're pregnant, right? So you cannot put on between the the navel, uh, uh, and the chest, uh, the ribs anymore. You have to place slightly higher above the stomach, uh, where above the baby is, uh, okay, which is very close to the sternum also. Yeah. So yeah, you need to do the same thing. But give a reason to support so why a pregnant woman needs to go through him leg maneuver. Actually, the answer is the same across everyone. You do him leg maneuver is to, is to give pressure to the lung so that the foot can be ejected. Ah. Okay. Ah. Uh, so no matter pregnant woman or not, your answer still is the same. So him leg maneuver is conducted or is carried out to eject or to repel the object that's stuck in the airway. So same, no matter pregnant woman or old person or a younger child, the same answer is to eject the foot away. Okay, good. Okay, uh, of course, I have more um, questions for you. I think each of the procedure, we do one, one, then okay, really, like, you want to try like the rest on your own, like eight and so on, quite a lot. Um, I think we're good for chapter two, right? We'll go for chapter two. Uh, we can go... Chapter three la. Chapter three. Hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. Maybe, maybe uh, we'll take a five minute toilet break because I need to go to the toilet anyway. Uh. Five minutes toilet break. I'll be back after toilet break. So we continue chapter three. Okay. Good. Good. B R B. Everybody.
Hello. Okay, like our uh, Obek, Obek, you're here. <laughs> we go to chapter three, like chapter three. Uh, what is it about? Okay, chapter three, only four things actually, four segments to talk about. So we have body temperature. Okay, we have pulse rate, we have blood pressure, we have body mass index. Okay, four parameter to measure whether your body is uh, healthy or not. Lah. Yeah, uh, I think we go for what was the question? Pulse rate. Okay, we go pulse rate first, then we go for body temperature. Okay, so uh, this is the this is the only experiment you have for your first four chapters, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, you have pulse rate experiment. And then chapter four, you don't have experiment. So if your first term exam or upcoming exam, uh, your syllabus is just one, two, three, four, meaning you have only one experiment to do, which later I'll show you how. Okay, if your exam has one to five, five also don't have experiment. But if your exam is until six, then yes, chapter six, you have another two more experiment. Okay, so, but before the experiment, we will get into some uh, section A question, which is, you know, hypothesis, uh, constant variable, manipulated variable. Yeah, these are the, these are the section A types of question. Okay, so uh, speaking about pulse rate, basically it's called the BPM, beats per minute. Okay, how many heartbeats you have in one minute. Okay, so we will have the pulse rate uh, measured from your pulse point. Pulse point basically means area on your body that are more obvious in feeling the pulse, which is, uh, you know, the wrist, uh, actually the, the behind the elbow, the, the near your where your headache area is that you press your head when you got headache, uh, and so on. So try to remember a few, maybe a two or three is enough. Okay, so these are the factors that affects your pulse rate. Lah. You actually did the same thing in you know, form three last time. So gender, lah, male and female is different. Male is slightly lower. Female is slightly higher because female heart is smaller. You pump less blood for each heartbeat. That's why you need to catch up a bit. Lah. Since I pump lesser each heartbeat, I pump faster so I can catch up the male speed. Age, of course, uh, older you are, uh, the, the lesser the pulse rate because your heart muscle actually uh, deteriorate also, degrade also. So you need to, uh, your muscle will need to rest a little bit, not pumping so fast. Okay, physical activity. The more active you are, the more uh, pulse rate you, you have because you need to pump more blood to the body. So your uh, heart will to work harder. Okay, health level. Less healthy person should have higher and lower lah, because we should have a standard number. Nothing in your body too high is good or too low is good. We always want to be, you know, right at the center. Okay, so too high and too low means not healthy. Lah. Yeah. Fitness level. Athletes usually have lower pulse rate because their muscles are stronger. Their heart muscles are stronger. So for every pump, it's much more than you and me. Lah. So they can pump one time, then they rest longer. So their pulse are uh, slower compared to you and me. Okay, these are the four factors. Lah. So like question number one, page 22, is it? Okay, so this, I think it's either one of the factor. So I think should be physical activity. Uh, there you go. Okay, and then uh, to check on the heart rate. Lah. Yeah, so we're on the physical activity uh, category or factor. Okay, so remember in section A, you must always find out your manipulated and responding variable first. So we know that this is your manipulating variable. This is your responding variable. Okay, yeah. So manipulating variable means that the factor that you're changing, the things that you want to test, and then responding will be your result. Oh, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, uh, student A, B, C, D, and then three kinds of activity, each of them will have to carry out the same. Then these are the heart rates that they have. Okay, like question A, very simple. Which student has the highest uh, heart rate in all activity? Okay, so like which one has the highest heart rate, meaning which number is higher? So quite obvious, right? Among all of them, within all the three activities, 
uh, student D has 69, 99, 115. Okay, so obviously, student D lah. Uh, we'll get to C or so, uh, Harish. Okay, state one reason for your answer in A. Why student D? I think quite obvious, ah. Uh, student D because all the numbers are given there, what? Okay, uh, uh, so then we will say, uh, what? Because uh, student D has, uh, highest pulse rate due to okay as long as um as long as you don't write answers that are too far away like oh student uh d is uh, uh, uh seeing his crush while he's resting walking and running that's why you know his heart rate goes up don't go too far away right although that that might happen like, if you see your crush your heartbeat will go up, right? But I think here we just have to keep to more scientific answer. Maybe D is nervous while doing carrying out the activity, or maybe D is um um uh, uh stressed, you know, during the activity. Uh, I I think these are still quite acceptable. Don't go too far, lah. As long as although we don't exactly learn this in your textbook, like we don't say why someone's pulse rate goes up. So we will assume that uh, he is stressed or maybe he's nervous. Ah. Okay. Then we have a uh, constant variable. So how is you asking what's constant variable? Constant variable means things must be fixed, fixed or constant. Things should not change, which is, you know what sometimes, last time we learned all the Variables, we have three variables. We have constant variable, manipulated variable, and responding variable. Yeah, there's three variables. Uh, we had this in form one, form two, form three also. Lah. Okay, constant variable, manipulated variable, and responding variable. Okay, so what's constant variable? Constant variable means things that must be fixed and fair. Uh, if you are testing on activity, types of activity, then other factor has to be fair. Gender, age, health level has to be fair, okay? Uh, so the others should be your constant variable. So we have to make sure all four students are the same gender, maybe boy, 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 or girl, girl, girl. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, the duration is the same. You have to make sure that uh, the, the their age are the same. Maybe the all of them are from four students. So these are the, the constant variable. Okay, so like hypothesis. Okay, hypothesis. You have to use your manipulated variable and responding variable. Manipulated variable and responding variable. So manipulated plus responding. Okay, from here, manipulated plus responding. Okay, okay. So usually the method is we do the the number one, the the. Number two, we can do compare. Okay, compare method, the the and compare method. Okay, so if the if the the is good, then we would we will use the the law. Don't have to don't have to choose the other one. The the means like the higher the the higher the right the usual one. That's what we always do. So, uh, we're talking about activity versus pulse rate, right? So, can we say like? The more active the activity, the higher the pulse rate. Does that fit the answer? Like, is it true? Like, the more vigorous the activity is, then your pulse rate will go higher. Uh, correct? Right? The more vigorous the exercise, your pulse rate will go up. So, we want to do a the, the. You want to try it on your own first? Can you try it on your own to write a the, the sentence? We're talking about this one versus this one. Uh, the, the correct word is called vigorous. Uh, v i g o r o u s. Vigorous means the more active the activity. If you don't want the word vigorous, then you just say the more active the activity. Okay? Then the, mm, you think about it. The answers are here already. You just have to form it into a sentence. Uh, okay, like you try.
Can I? Okay, so like, should be all right. Uh, I mean, is, is this plus minus grammar? Lah? So not a big issue. Huh? Okay, like we double check, then we go to, uh, go to E, okay? Okay, heart rate are normally count using fingers, but before assistive, assist, assistive device exists. Uh, so yeah, last time we had to really like touch and, and count, like doctors will have to touch the pulse point, the doctor have to look at the clock, and doctor will have to count how many beats, right? So anyway, what, what is the assistive device that can count heart rate nowadays? So nowadays, how, how are we going to use, what are we going to use to count our heart rate? So uh, it's so accessible now, you know, we all can wear something called the smartwatch. So yeah, actually your answer can be smartwatch or you can write uh, applications in phones, okay? Or the a bit old school way also called the Sphigmo Manometer, which we will talk about it in blood pressure. Sphigmo Manometer, we have it later also. Lah. Uh, so like, there you go. Okay, you can choose either one or if you don't mind, you can record them. Eh? Yeah, then that's the pulse rate question. Then we can try out uh, maybe the therm the thermometer one, the body temperature. Or oh, actually, the body temperature quite straightforward. Right, after this, we move on. Okay. Okay, huh? Okay, like so. The next one. Wait, let me check on what's the time now. Okay, it's almost three, huh? Okay. Um okay, maybe I move on with blood pressure and body mass index. Uh temperature is quite straightforward. I might leave out that and I'll get to the the experiment formatting. Okay. Um let's talk about blood pressure. All right, so blood pressure. Um, there's always two numbers that you need to remember, right? Which is called the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. Okay, to measure it, we will use a sphygmo manometer or a digital sphygmo manometer, which is for our home use. Lah. So the unit for it is called mmHg, lah, millimeter uh, mercury. So the bigger number means systolic. Why bigger number? Because systolic pressure is when your blood vessels or your heart contract and pump blood to uh, uh, away from the heart to the whole parts of the body. So this number will be eventually bigger because the pressure is stronger. La. Your heart has to like pump and force blood out. Okay, so you eventually get a bigger number on top. Then the bottom number is 80, which is a lower number, which is when the heart muscle is resting, meaning blood comes back. When blood comes back to the heart, chill, not so high pressure. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, there you go. So, so basically that's what the number means. Huh? Okay, yeah. um, then what else? We, we can uh, go on to the question, then we'll come back if we need to. Let's see what do we need. Uh, 25, lah, like we try out number five, question number five, page 25. Okay. Okay, so like, uh, what is the name? Okay, so obviously this one is digital. La, huh? so make sure you write the word digital. So digital sphere or manometer. Okay, good. Right. So then um, explain the condition of the heart muscle when blood pressure reading is 120 slash 80. Okay, meaning question one to explain what is 120. One is 80. So you have to know the big number will be 
systole. So you have to say, oh, uh, 120 is the systolic pressure. What is systolic pressure? Systolic pressure is the pressure that when the blood vessels and the heart muscle contract, that's the big number. So basically you need this one. Then the, you do the same thing. What is uh, 80? 80 means diastolic pressure. Why? Oh, because that's the pressure da, 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 when the heart is resting. Uh, so I give you the first one, then the other one you do opposite. Uh, so one, two, zero is systolic pressure, which means the heart muscle contract. Uh, so like you can get on with it. Then number two, you opposite. You do the same thing, okay? Okay, good. You do the opposite for number two. Huh? We go to C, okay? Okay. What is the reading that shows a person with hyperpressure? So remember hyperpressure, the top number 120, you add another 20, so it's 140. The bottom number 80, you add another 10. So meaning the top, you add 20, the bottom, you add 10. That will be the number. That's how you try to remember or memorize. So anyways, you can refer. It's here. Uh, 140 and 90. Uh, 140, 90. Okay. So 140 slash 90. M -M -H -G. Make sure you write your MMHG. If you write 140 slash 90 and then that's it, then no marks. Because uh, unit is very important also. So a doctor confirmed that patient K had hyperpressure. How does doctor determine that? Uh, uh, doctor, uh, doctor, doctor. Uh. Okay, so probably that's what you were thinking. It's actually very simple. Just back to your basic, back to your syllabus. How someone determine blood pressure is to measure. Lo. I mean, the, it's very straightforward, right? You measure with the straight one manometer. Lo. And number two, how would doctor know it's blood pressure? Then that's where you throw in your number. Then you can say, oh, uh, the, the patient uh, uh, has 140, okay? The patient has 140 for systolic and has 90 for diastolic. Uh, then that's how I determine. So two points here. Number one, you measure. The, the blood pressure is measured first mark. Number two, uh, uh, the systolic blood Pressure reading is 140 and above. The diastolic pressure reading is 90 and above, which means the patient has hyperpressure. Like that. Okay, it's very uh, straightforward one. It's not, it's not any other like weird answers that you have to write. Okay, so be, be close to syllabus is always the safest way of answering. There you go.
good. Okay, then uh, that's for blood pressure. We have uh, BMI, mm, BMI, body mass index. Okay, uh, like, uh, okay. So um then BMI. BMI is an old-fashioned way of measuring uh, body mass against high. So these are the the, the number that you want to watch out. Like uh, as long as you are in desirable weight, then that's okay. So if question give you a number and ask you like what category you try to remember a bit. Uh, so the normal range will be 18.5 to 24.9 lah. Anything lower than 18.5 underweight, 25 to 29, that's overweight. 30 above obese, you try to remember like which is which. Okay, so overweight and underweight is both not healthy actually. Like I said, all our measurements are had to be in the middle one. Body temperature 37 means 37, anything higher, lower, no good. Blood pressure must be, you know, 120 over 80, anything higher, lower, no good. Uh, same goes to this one. Must be between 18.5 to 24.9. Anything higher, lower, no good. Okay. And uh, we have the question, I think, like, can we turn over? Uh, uh, okay, look, 27, like, question number 8. 27, question number 8. Okay. Okay, the first one is to copy answer. Lah. <laughs> what is body mass index? Right? Body mass index is the measurement of body mass against height. Uh, like basically straightforward. Yeah, good. Uh. Okay, the next one we will write down the formula law, right? Formula. Hey, body weight law. Body mass in terms of kg over uh, height squared. Okay, height square. So the unit becomes meter square. Lah. Your height has to be meter. But the table already give you in meter, so not a big problem. Sometimes the question give you by like CM, you know, like we, we measure by CM, right? But oh, I'm 175 uh, CM. Okay, so then that's 175 CM, but you have to change it to 1.75 meter. Okay, so what, we, what I want you to do now is basically get your calculator or your phone, if you're not using phone for, for the class now, then you just press calculator. Like for example, this is the formula, right? 45 over, then you bracket 1.5 square. Then press enter, lah. you should be able to get your answers. So do the same for all, because this one you need to square all of them first. You need to square. Or you press one shot, lah, calculator, and you should be able to get this, okay? Like your try, ah. Huh? Then can I have someone to send me all the answers? <laughs> Who would you like to? Who would like to send me? Let me choose, maybe. <laughs> can I have... Can I have Samantha? Hi, Sam. So you can type me all the numbers later lah, when you finish. If you are there. 
Oh, you are. <laughs> Hello. Hey, where's all your friends? Where's two of your friends? Are they not? John, you should, you, should, you should call them and join. You don't have calculator with... Are you not at home? You're outside, ah? Are you like walking, shopping mall and put on your earphone, try to buy some potato chips and listen to my class at the same time? Okay. Auntie's house. Oh, okay. Then who else? Can I have Amy? And then after this, Amy, if you're done, you can talk to me. Thank you very much. How to put in Cal? Huh? You mean how to? Bro, you. Are you serious? You don't have to press me. The formula is this one. So you put your body uh, Okay. Okay, everyone get your answers. So how everyone got it? Is Amy ready to send me the answer? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're done with all the like A to E, then you can type in so we all can check. How is it? Oh, okay. Twi okay, so your your check if you're correct, uh, because I don't know what I just follow. Uh, so uh your cross check also. So A is 20, 20 20.54, 28.53, 19.51, So everybody can cross check. Thank you very much, Amy. Appreciate it. So, so like from here, you can know, oh, someone is, I think, overweight, and then the rest is okay. Lah. Oh. Okay, I'll cross check. Is your answers the same? Hopefully. No, no objection means correct one. Lah. I trust you, like me. Lah. Okay. And everyone trusts you, I guess. <laughs> Okay, identify the student that is overweight. Overweight is what? Overweight is 25 uh, to this one. Yeah, 25 to 29. Uh. So obviously, C, uh, individual C. Uh, 
Uh, okay, as a friend, what suggestion advice would you provide to help him reduce? Sounds funny, right? But actually part of your syllabus like how to increase your body mass and how to decrease your body mass, <laughs> how to get big, how to get slim. So just go for the usual answers. Huh? Oh, don't write funny, funny stuff. We can go for like makan. Huh? Makan is very important in controlling. Huh? Uh, eat healthy food or, you know, according to the healthy Malaysian healthy plate, or you can go for like exercise. You know, the usual answer would be exercise. Uh, so always go for the usual answer. Okay, la, voila, that's the BMI we have. And uh, I think for body temperature, that's quite straightforward. I'll leave that to you because uh, I need to get into the experiment part already. So uh, you all can learn the, the formatting a bit. La. But, but the very simple formatting for now. As you go on in Form 4, later on in Form 5, you all will, uh, you all will get into more complicated one. Okay. Um, so yeah, after this, I need you all to get like a line paper for yourself. Or maybe any page that is empty. I don't need uh, a very big space. Oh, uh, okay, good. Like in five seconds, we'll get to it. Okay, Joe, it's actually right behind. So I'm not going to do chapter four, huh? chapter four uh, for you. Uh, we can go to page 39, 39, page 39. So as I was saying, uh, you have only one experiment. If your exam is until the chapter four or chapter five, you have only one experiment in chapter three, which is the pulse rate experiment. But I'm pretty sure you all remember this because you, you all must have done this in school also. Okay, so the factors are here. But they're all the same. We're just changing factors. Uh, then the, the question is actually 40, uh, page 40. Uh, uh, like you turn to page 40. Then the rest, not, not your issue. Uh, no worries uh, if you don't have until those exams. Because some school, they exam until chapter 6. Uh, anyone of you from Catholic High School? If you're from Catholic High School, your teacher jumped to 6, right? You know that. Uh, uh, okay. Any, any just... Uh, Hey, Carl, any, any CHS students? I'm not sure. Any Catholic high student? Who was that just now? Amy, is it? Or myself? Huh? So if you are CHS, then you need chapter 6. Huh? Chapter 6, right, would be... Um, in my YouTube channel, actually, if you want, if you're from Catholic High School, if you want to look at how chapter six is, then uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. Okay, you can find uh, the experiment there, chapter number six. Huh? Okay, but for now, uh, I'll get to page 40 first, this one. Okay, get a space for yourself huh, huh, to write down the answers. Okay, so the story is like that. Darius follow his uh, younger brother and his mother uh, climbing stairs to their house on the fourth floor. So when they reached the home, right, uh, he's, he saw that his mother gasping for air while brother is breathing normally. That means the mother is like, uh, very tired. Then the brother is like, hmm, nothing normal. Ma. So he wanted to investigate the differences between pulse rate of his mother and brother. So obviously from here, we are testing on... Um, uh, uh, age, right? Mother and brother means age issue. Okay, so the first question asking for problem statement. So problem statement meaning you must ask a question. Your answer must be a question mark. So these format are pretty fixed. Like in your exam, you should see something similar like that. The question will give you. So the whole question will cost you 10 marks. Okay, so like problem statement, as I said, it must be a question. So you want to ask a question. So we can say problem statement okay so usually we ask question by starting the word like does will is you know that kind of thing okay so problem statement like i would like to use your 
uh, manipulated and responding variable. So before the whole experiment, you must make sure you find out your manipulated variable and responding variable. So my manipulated variable will be H, right? We're testing on H and responding variable will be pulse rate. Okay, pulse rate. Yeah. Uh, so you can you can write that down on uh, on uh, the site first. Yeah. Okay. So now go back to your problem statement. So I want to try to combine my manipulated and responding together. So I want to study like if H will affect your pulse rate. Like we want to ask a question about it. So we will do this, right? Does Okay, does the pulse rate of a person by this age? Question. Uh, so I'm creating a question to ask. But I'm curious. So I want to ask that. Really? It affects me? Uh, like that. Okay, yeah. Uh, so like, there you go. So I'm, I'm still having my pulse rate. I'm still having my age, uh, my manipulated and my responding is here. Okay. Okay. Then the next one will be hypothesis. So hypothesis, I think we did just now. You all know that you have to be your manipulator and responding also. So the whole experiment, right? The, the soul of the experiment or the backbone of the experiment, right? Is your manipulated and your responding variable. So you must always first find out what is your manipulated and responding. Okay. Then that's the backbone of the, the whole experiment. Okay, the next one will be hypothesis. So usually if the, the is good, right, we will just go for the, the. the other type are uh, called the compare and there's more types to it. We will learn along the way. Uh. Okay, so I want to say like, um, you know, the, the older the age, then the, the lower the, the pulse rate, I guess. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, hmm. The, the, uh, the older the person is or the age comma the lower the house rate is so i'm still using my manipulated and responding Okay, good. Right, and the next one will be your aim of the experiment. So the question here says, uh, based on the given statement, design a laboratory experiment, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're not, we're not really using Darius' mother and the brother. Lah. That was just a story. You need to go back to your original experiment, which is here. Lah. Yeah, this one, teacher, student, laboratory assistant. So you must read through the original experiment also. Oh. Okay, so your aim, uh, like, there you go. Is it the formatting? Aim is always to study. Okay, so your starting is always to study the, okay, usually there's two types. Uh. You can say to study the relationship or to study the effect. 
It's up to you. Which one makes better better sentences? Then you can go for it. So I say, I think I want to study the a relationship between someone's age and the pulse rate. So I want to see like how are they affecting each other. Like really, someone's older should have slower pulse rate. So I want to study the relationship. Okay. So study the relationship between age of a person and Oh, oh, there you go. So, see, I'm still within my backbone. Mm, there you go. All right. So nowadays, right, uh, not not say nowadays, like last year, uh, the, the format of SPM changed slightly, especially this question, like this uh, essay question, right? or I should say this experiment question. The way they ask, they kind of change a little bit. So it depends whether your teacher uh, is, is following that or, or having this type of question. So a bit difficult to tell like which type is it, but the, the answer is slightly the same, just that sometimes they don't ask they don't ask manipulator responding and constant like that because the question is this one two marks for three uh, variables huh? yeah so uh, sometimes they don't ask this anymore they change to questions like um, what are the factors that is changing changing means manipulated variable then you have to know the way they ask is different so your changing variable is always manipulated uh, or what are the factors that is being observed, the way they ask, they change. Uh, so, so slightly different, but you aga aga lah. Uh, okay, so what's my menu plated here? Uh, luckily, we already found out at the very first page be be before even we start the experiment. So your responding, your menu plated will be age, right? Right, then this one will be house rate. Uh, see, that's the fundamental of the experiment, okay? Constant. Constant means things that must be fixed, lah, must be fair, lah, which is the other factor. Since we're testing on age, lah, yeah, we have student, teacher, and laboratory assistant, then everything else make sure it's the same. Make sure they are the same gender. They are all male or they are all female. Make sure they are the same uh, type of activity. Walking upstairs means walking upstairs. Okay, Cannot be one walking upstairs, one sitting down and read books. Then that's not fair. Uh, okay, so like the other factor, lah, let's say we go for gender. What else? Uh, type of activities, duration of experiment, it means how long, lah, maybe for you know half an hour or 10 minutes, it depends. Uh, then after this will be the headache part. Okay, sometimes question might not ask also. Not not the like latest SPM format. I saw some of them, and some of the questions are not asking for procedure. They ask for something else. They they, um, they ask for drawing only, drawing. But this one no drawing. This one is just touching the person's hand. Uh, so, uh, well, you got to know a bit on the step. So, to of course save time, we're not we're not writing. We'll, what happened? Okay, we're not writing the steps. Uh, the steps are here for you. Okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll leave this part empty for you. You can copy later. Just write one time because since now you have only one experiment, later on you have no more chance already because the second term, the third term, right, it's getting more experiment. You have to memorize. So now since you have only one, you score as much as you can. Uh. Uh, then the last one will be tabulation of data. Right, tabulation of data number four. So let me just skip uh, a bit. You can write later if you want to. Lah. So I go for ta tabulation of data. Okay, so the table is also here already. Remember the table, right? You don't need to write answer. Because 
teach the marks doesn't come from the table. The marks comes from how you write your manipulated and responding variable correctly. Okay, meaning this must be your manipulated variable, this must be your responding. Uh, teacher want to see if you know how to present your answer, like which is which. This one empty is okay, empty is okay, because we don't really do it on the spot in exam. I don't know the numbers. So don't have to write the numbers. Okay, so the mark comes from whether you know how to present your table. Lah. Just like how we, when we do exercise, the exercise already provide us with the table, right? Then we find answer, like, oh, this is many, this is very good, this is But now you do it the other way around, you create the table. So like I said, this first term exam, you have only one experiment to memorize. So you memorize how the table is. Because later on, there's so many of them, you cannot memorize anymore. So like that will cost you 10 marks, lah, basically. 10 over 10 lah, if you do everything right. So honestly, I think if you can get like 6 over 10 is good enough. Lah. Or 7. Lah. That means you screw up the, the procedure. Lah. You screw up the drawing. You screw up the procedure. You still get about that. So this is 1 mark, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, about that. This one you screw up, lah, assuming. You get 6 or 7 like that. Uh, so this is what I call the, the formatting. Uh, if you want to like learn the other types, like other experiments, uh, especially those who have chapter six, you can go ahead to my YouTube channel and find the, the, video, the older videos. Uh, I have like a few videos. You uh, can learn from there also. Uh, okay. Uh, well, um, you can quickly draft the, the graph, uh, the table. Uh, uh. So like I said, chapter four is for you. Mm. We will probably continue chapter six next week because uh, we're doing chapter six in normal class, right? So we'll continue chapter six probably. Um, but just in case any of you physical students, uh, if you're physical student, you bring along your seminar material. I'll see if I need to continue in normal class or not. I will just move on chapter six. Uh. Uh, yeah. If you're done, we are done. I hope I help you a little bit on your one, two, three, chapter one, two, three. So you have lesser work to do at home. You can continue to do the exercise. My answers will be in your GC or in TTC, the seminar website also. Lah. You'll be able to download. Okay. Well, um, I guess have a good day for the rest of the Sunday. I see you the next time. Right. Peace, everybody. Goodbye. See you, see you.